to see a kind of full sanctuary. We are beginning to regather. We're especially glad to be here on what I was calling Youth Sunday. But I realize it's not our traditional Youth Sunday. We realize this is our scholarship Sunday. It's our graduate Sunday. It's a time for us to pivot and to recognize and to celebrate with all our graduates, whether you graduate from 8th grade, 12th grade, from college. And we are just glad that you're here. We're especially excited that this Sunday is Kyle and Lauren Parker's first Sunday here with us as our new youth minister. We are blessed to have Kyle. We're going to have a chance to introduce him a little bit later on, but we just think this is a wonderful Sunday for us to move forward. So if you're not already, please feel free throughout the service or at the end of our service to make sure you introduce yourselves to them as well. So we're going to continue to recognize the mighty work that our God is doing in the life of of all of our students, and I hope that we're encouraged. We're going to do things a little bit different this year because of COVID. Instead of having people come up and speak, we try to prepare a video, and we're going to see how that works for us this Sunday. But I think it's great to see how God has been working in each and every one of our students' lives. So now let's take a moment and enter into our prayer here just to spend the time to quiet our hearts and to pray for God.
seated. And now I want to take a moment and we're going to recognize all of our 2020 graduates. And before we get to our, our seniors especially, which we always have an opportunity to do that, we, I want to first recognize our college students and our 8th grade students as well. There's a lot of graduates that have happened in our church this past year and we're glad to be able to rejoice alongside of you. So first I just wanted to share our college graduates. Trisha Goforth has graduated from Salem County Community College with Associates in Applied Science and Business Administration. And she's, it's, it's a blessing now to have Trish as she is now going to be serving on our scholarship committee. We'll be hearing from her a little bit later, but it's just so wonderful to see our college graduates who were just receiving scholarships just last year to now be on the other side of our scholarship giving as well. Our other college student is Natalie Williams. She graduated from Eastern University with a Bachelor's of Science in Kinesiology. She is now, as of, I believe, Monday, working at Bancroft as a program manager. She has been a, a leader on some of our mission trips and so many different activities as well, but just continue to see her heart for mission, her heart for others. It's just a wonderful blessing to see what she has done in our church and what she's going to continue to do as well. And our eighth grade graduates, we have a lot of eighth grade graduates. As I was going down the list, I, I think our eighth grades have been overlooked a little bit this year just because of the things that have happened with senior year, especially with our college students as well. But our eighth grade graduates, if they've moved on from middle school and now to high school, and I'm sure they've had plans to sign up for sports and do different activities, and they're moving into this time of just unknown and uncertainty. So I wanted to take a moment and, and just recognize our FBC graduates. We have Mark Bant, Aubrey Cunningham, Amanda Gertine, Lauren Lippicott, and Grace Sawala. And as I was going through the, the list that we have as well, we have a number of youth group 8th grade graduates who've been part of our ministry for either this past year or a number of years. And they are Corey, Taylor, Katie, Allie, Faith, Avery, Maddie, Annie, Abby, Marley, and Sydney. And so there's a lot of 8th grades that we just need to continue to come around them, pray with them, and as they move into this next phase in their life of going into high school, and now we do have a special slideshow as well for some of our high school graduates. And this is a very special class for me because when I started here in 2014, these group of seniors were in seventh grade. And it was just really wonderful to see each and every one of these seventh graders mature and become these great, fine young women, and just seeing their achievement, their success, but above all else, their heart for Christ, and just watching them grow and develop and mature in their life their faith, with their family. It's been a privilege to watch each and every one of them shaped by God. And this is one of my favorite Sundays that we get a chance to hear from our graduates. We get a chance to recognize them and acknowledge them. And we're doing things a little bit different. Instead of calling them up, we have prepared a video that we're going to be showing a little bit later because we want to continue to keep everybody safe and do things properly. But I did want to recognize each and every one of our graduates. And as I read through the list of achievements, I hope that you're as amazed as I am of just our four students and all the great and wonderful things that they have done. So as you can see, we have Eleanor Frank, Jordan Hackett-Slim, Paige Willer, and Mackenzie Radigan. So first, Ellie Frank has graduated from Salem High School. We have graduates from three different high schools this year, which I think is incredible. Some of her accomplishments that she shared with me that she was the salutatorian, Salem County Fair Queen, heavily involved in 4-H, I believe, in one of her scholarship essays, she said she has held every single officer position that was available for 4-H, which I think is remarkable. And, and she was a musical for all four years as well in high school. She will be attending Bloomsburg University as a health science major. I asked her youth what their favorite church activity was or their favorite youth group activity, and, and Ellie shared with me that her favorite youth group activity was youth group songs and singing and dancing. It's just wonderful to see all of our students continue to engage in worship. And her favorite youth group game was spoons. And if you've never played spoons before, you think it might be a mild and relaxed game, but not when our youth group is involved. And seeing Ellie and, and I, especially Holden too, with the diving around, around the floor and everything else that grabbed her spoons, it is great to see. And next we have Jordan Hackeslin. She's a graduate of Salem County Votech. Some of her accomplishments that she shared with me is Captain of Color Guard, National Tech Honor Society member, and Operational Officer for her ROTC unit. She'll be attending New Haven University. She'll be majoring in criminal justice. 
And some of Jordan's favorite activities as well from, from youth group that she shared with me is her work at camp, her desire to reach out. She was on the leadership team. Um, I realized she was on our student leadership team for the absolute longest, because I can't remember which grade you started in, but from, from whatever grade that was until senior, it's been great to see Jordan continue to, to expand, to grow in her faith this past spring. We were supposed to have a spring retreat, and Jordan was instrumental in just casting vision for that, planning it. It was her idea, it was her event, it was her retreat, and it was just really cool to see her heart for ministry. And that's what the wonderful thing about all our seniors. It's just their desire to not only succeed, but to build other people up alongside of them. Next is Paige Willer. She's a graduate of Woodstown High School. Some of her accomplishments in balancing a job Maintaining good grades, being on the National Honor Society, the top 15 in our class as well. She will be going to Salem County College and majoring in criminal justice to be a forensic technician. And her favorite youth group activities is her many missions trips and meeting many and new great people. And I think that really sums up Paige's time as well, just her, her servant's part. I remember one time um, we, were, we were on a missions trip and Paige was just exhausted, which, which I think was pretty typical for Paige. Um, after the long trip, she was just always tired, and I, and I told Paige to go take a nap. And what sur surprised me was that I don't even remember what activity we were doing, but Paige said, no, I want to finish what we're doing. And so it's just great to continue to see her servant's heart, seeing her choose criminal justice, and to continue to go and serve others. And lastly, we have Mackenzie Radigan. She is a graduate of Woodstown High School. She also graduated salutatorian. It's, it's wonderful to see just all of your girls' accomplishments, how wonderful and how great God is working through you. She was involved in the musical, academic team, the mock trial, National Honor Society, AP Environmental Science Team, swim team, Odyssey of the Mind, and a student tutor. Mackenzie will be attending the University of Delaware Honors College for exercise science on the physical therapy track. She also plans to, to minor in dance and French. And one of my favorite memories of, of Mackenzie is, is one of our, my very first youth group events was a Super Bowl party at my house. And as we were there having a Super Bowl party, I realized that Mackenzie was not very much into football. And I think we spent like a half an hour or 40 minutes. We ended up talking about the most random things from unicorns and mermaids and how they related even into the Bible and what that meant. And just seeing her ability to be able to talk to anyone, to stand up for what is right, it's just wonderful to see all of our seniors, seniors to see their student hearts, to see their love, to serve others, and just sharing with me as well. I, I realized with, with Ellie, Jordan, and Paige, as, as they've also submitted scholarships as well, is when I was asking them for their accomplishments, I had to, to dig deep. I had to go back in their essays because I don't think they shared everything with me through our text messages, but it's just wonderful to see their their servant's hearts, their humility, and their desire is not rooted in their accomplishments, but it continues to be rooted in their faith, and we're praying alongside of you as you move forward to this next stage of life. We know it's not going to be easy. We know it's going to be completely different, probably a little bit scary or unknown or anxious, but we as a church family just wanted to take this moment to recognize you, to say that we're here praying alongside of you. And I just want to take a moment as we're going to ask, I want to ask our seniors to, to stand up, and I just want to take a moment for us as a church to just applaud them. So if you guys could just stand up. And I, I also just want to ask our, now our college students and eighth graders to stand up as well. So feel free to look around. I see we have two other ones, and just applaud them as well with our students. And we are just great for the influence that you have on our church, the influence that you have on our hearts. And again, this 12th grade year, I know I'm a little bit biased, but you guys have been with me for the past five years, and it's just been wonderful. It's been a blessing to serve alongside of you. So now as we move into this time of prayer and praise, we are going to finish with the Lord's Prayer saying debts and debtors. But I just want to take time as we enter into prayer, and I just want to mention everybody by name as well. So if you would join me in prayer. Father God, we as a church are blessed. We are blessed by our many graduates. Lord, we are blessed by our youth. Lord, we are blessed by the families who continue to raise up such 
great and strong men and women of the faith, and we are just so thankful for them. Lord, this is church has just been a blessing to come alongside of our youth ministry or young adults to empower them, equip them, Lord. It's a great opportunity for us to, to support them, not only financially, but spiritually as well. And God, as they all prepare to go into this next stage of their life, there's so much unknown. Lord, there's just so much things that they were thinking of a year ago that it's not the same. So I pray that you be with them. I pray that you can be their portion, Lord, and we know that you who began a good work will bring it to completion in Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you continue to be with all our youth, with our teenagers, with our children. Typically, this is Youth Sunday, and we have people here singing, participating, Lord, doing all these different activities, and we weren't able to do this this year, but Lord, we know that our youth are still in our hearts. They're still in our prayers. And God, we are excited for this day of transition. We are excited for Kyle Parker and his new ministry that he'll be starting, Lord, this week, today, this month, this year, and we know, Lord, that you are going to continue to do great work through him. And God, right now, I just want to pray for all our graduates by name. Lord, I pray that you be with Ellie. She goes to Bloomsburg, Lord, continue to guide her, help her. Lord, I pray that you be with Jordan as she goes to New Haven just to continue to come alongside of her, be her comfort. Lord, I pray that you be with Paige as she goes to Salem. Lord, continue to show her your path. Lord, continue to be with her. I pray that you be with Mackenzie. She goes to the University of Delaware, Lord, and just that you can be your strength. Lord, I also pray that you be with Tricia and Natalie as they both graduated from college. Lord, are beginning to look about where you're leading next. God, I want to pray for all our 8th grade graduates as they begin to prepare to enter into high school. I want to pray for Mark, for Aubrey, Amanda, Lauren, Grace, Tori, Taylor, Katie, Allie, Faith, Avery, Maddie, Annie, Abby, Marley, and Sydney. Lord, we know that we as a church, it takes more than just a youth minister to have a successful youth ministry. Lord, it takes an entire church to be committed in prayer and support and love. And above all else, just glorifying you. And we are blessed to be able to gather here this Sunday to do just that. We are thankful for your work in this church's life. Lord, above all else, we're thankful for your son. We're thankful for this opportunity to come together on the scholarship this graduate Sunday and to celebrate your victory on the cross. To realize, Lord, that we have this unity through you. And we acknowledge one another, Lord, so that we can acknowledge you better. And we thank you for the prayer that you taught us to pray together in unison, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So now we're going to move into a time of scripture reading. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 1 to 9. And I thought a very appropriate scripture text for us this Sunday as we celebrate our youth, our young adults, as we have a chance to hear from them just in a few short minutes as well. God's word says, now this is the commandment. The statute and the rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your sons and your sons' sons, by keeping all his statutes and commandments which I have commanded to you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and that you may multiply greatly as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you in a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I commanded you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when 
you lie down, and when you rise, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So moving to this time of video reflection, I was just thinking of what I wanted to share just very briefly today. Just really how I've been encouraged by our students, how I've been encouraged by their faith, by their heart for Christ, and seeing all that they were doing. And this past week I was driving. I was actually driving to my grandparents' house. We were going to have lunch with them. And as I was driving there, I remember very clearly a, a car came over the yellow line and I, I panicked, right? I, I swerved out of the way. I laid on my horn. I didn't know what was happening and I just went about my way. Luckily everything was fine, but that memory was just etched in my mind. And I realized how many times we drive and we take that for granted. Right? We expect everybody to stay the course in which they are going. We expect everybody to never cross that line. And as I was processing through this and thinking through this, I realized sometimes we do that with God. We expect God to stay between that yellow and the white line to continue on His course. But this past year, as we look at our college students, at our graduates, as our 8th graders, all our teenagers, even in our own lives. God has definitely come over that yellow line. He's come over that white line. But we know He is doing it. Not to disrupt us, to make our lives miserable, but for us to be able to glorify Him. And it's been wonderful to hear the heart of our students, to hear their desire of God working through each and every one of them. As we move into this time, I hope it can continue to be encouragement for you. It's, it's a little heartbreaking for me to, to show this on, on a video because it is so much more. We love that personal touch with us as a church, but we are still this hybrid ministry. We have people not only at home, but in Fellowship Hall and in the parlor watching as well. And we are just grateful that we have this technology, that we can show this to everybody. It's a great opportunity for us as a church to get outside of our four walls and to continue to celebrate the success of our students. So now we're going to move into this time of video as well. And they're ready for a video. Patricia Goforth is going to come up and going to share with us some of our scholarships award from the committee as well. Financial struggles. 
and they didn't have the money required for me to attend the church of Sunday school. Even though I wanted to go, and they were able to eventually get the money, the church said they were sorry, but they did not make room for me in their Sunday school class. This was when everything changed. My dad took me to the first Baptist church in Woodstown. Now, when I was at my mom's church, I saw a lot of grown people who would scowl and frown at me when I attempted to sing along during the service. One man would even glare at me and make sure I saw him turn down his hearing aid when I started to sing. I didn't know what I was doing wrong, but I knew I didn't like it. Although I was scared at first when I went to the church with my father, I found welcoming people everywhere. The children were able to interact with the pastor during church. This was something I had never seen before. He made the service fun through the mystery message box and trying to stump the pastor. One day, a grown man with a beard and handed me the box. The man asked me to put anything I wanted into it for next Sunday. It would be my job to stump the pastor and see if he can connect God to an everyday object. I decided to put my favorite necklace pillow into the box. It was shaped as a trap, and when he opened it in front of everyone, he explained how it relates to God. I could not believe that somebody was able to connect God to a necklace, but he did it. He explains that it relates to God because God supports all of us. He supports our mind, our body, our soul, every single one of us. Whereas the necklace supported us, but just my neck and my head. I remember the feeling of him placing his arm around me and making me feel like I was at home in the house of God, that I am welcome in God's house. The pastor then handed me the box, and I went with all the other kids, where we went and sang and danced, played games, made crafts, and sometimes even got to have a snack. The members of the First Baptist Church even sent me to Baptist Camp Lebanon for my first sleepaway camp. When I talked to my dad about why I feel so different between the two churches, he explained to me that a relationship with God is a personal one. That we don't need anyone to talk to God for us. We can go to God on our own, and He will listen and answer us. It is through God's love and word that we will find our place. At the end of the year, Pastor Darrell even gave me my very own Bible. For the first time, I felt that the house of God was a home. It was my home. The following year, my dad switched jobs and had to work on weekends, so I returned back to my mom's church for my fifth grade Sunday school. The year after that, my mom's church welcomed a new person into the youth section. She was warm and welcoming and listened to the suggestions from the children. She then created something called Bible Adventures, which was like what First Baptist had been doing, and I once again felt welcome. There we sang, we danced, we listened to scripture in a new idea, a new way. I helped teach the songs I learned from First Baptist BBS program that year. Unfortunately, though, the lady who had taken over was called to work in faith somewhere else, and the program began to fall. It was then that I had a calm, that for now, this is where I needed to be. I took everything I learned in fourth grade from the First Baptist Church of Woodstown and used it. I did my best to make the children feel how I felt at the First Baptist Church, that God's home is their home. And the love he has for me, he has for each and every one of them. I did my best to make them feel safe and loved by God and his son. The year I entered ninth grade in high school was my first year teaching on my own in Sunday school. I was asked to teach second grade. One day, a mother of a student approached me and explained that her child hated me coming to church. I was a little bit confused, and then she became teary-eyed. And she explained to me that now her son practically drags her to church because he feels safe here. He felt loved and accepted. He felt as though he wanted to be a part of the Christian faith and follow it. What I've learned so far is that God is love. 
His love for us is warm, welcoming and never ending. God's love is very personal, but abundant enough for everyone. Just as I had learned from everyone at First Baptist, God's love is felt best when shared with others. I continued to teach second grade throughout high school, served as a crew leader for First Baptist Church of Woodstown's Vacation Bible School program, and attended youth group events at First Baptist whenever I possibly could. My friends seem a kid about my love of Christian radio, but it doesn't bother me because I know God loves me and I've been called to share and teach his love. I want to thank you guys again for considering me as a scholarship citizen and send you home remembering that God loves you and you taught me that he loved me. Thank you. Good morning, FBC family. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Trisha Gilbert. I was born and raised here in the church and have been a regular attendee um, ever since I can remember. <laughs> Two years ago, I decided to go back to Salem Community College and um, work towards getting my associate in Applied Science Business Administration. I've been working for about 15 years in business administration. Um, our very own Darlene Perkins, who moved back home to Montana last year, um, hired me in, and now I run the entire office of the um, company. So I decided to go back to school so that I could learn some of the things that, you know, working in a small office doesn't teach you. Um, a little bit more about the corporate world, a little bit more about certain programs and accounting um, that you don't necessarily learn working for one company. So I recently graduated. Um, graduation should have been in May, but thanks to COVID, it was pushed off. Um, they did a drive-through ceremony in, I believe it was June. I was not able to take part, um, but I did receive my diploma. They mailed it to me. <laughs> um, so and I'm just so thankful to my FBC family for helping me get through this time. Uh, it was a very rough couple of years. Um, never been the best student, and in the midst of it all, I wanted to visit my mom, I wanted to make my finals, and it was a really hard year last year. Um, but FBC really stayed by my side and helped continue to push me forward, so I'm very appreciative of that. Um, where is God leading me now? I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> um, I still feel like I am kind of lost at sea in terms of where I'm going next. Um, I know that job-wise, I'm pretty happy where I'm at. Um, every job has its ups and downs, however, you know, I do have a pretty decent situation going on. Um, and so I don't 100% know where I'm going, however, I do know that God has a plan. Um, he has a plan for me, He has a plan for you, and it's a good one. Um, Jeremiah 29 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Uh, that's kind of my life first, and I'm very thankful to my mom for that because no matter what's going on in my life, I know that God has a plan for me whether I know it or not. Um, so if moving forward, you please just say a prayer so I can help kind of find my way a little bit. Know what God has in store for me. I would greatly appreciate that. Thank you all. Have a great day. God bless. Hi, church family. I hope you're all doing well, despite everything that is going on. Um, I'm Henry, if you don't know me. I just finished my sophomore year at Eastern University and am going back uh, in a few weeks for junior year. We're still supposed to be on campus, so I'm excited but nervous for that. Um, I'm an early childhood education major, and that was new for me this year. I switched from history with a concentration in secondary education to early childhood education. Um, I had another nursery job working up there and it's just a lot of babysitting, and I just really felt like I was being called to switch my area of focus into a group of younger kids because I really had a passion about working with that age group, and it was the right fit for me. So I switched, and I'm really excited about that change and taking more education courses next year. Um, I also came across at Eastern. Um, I wasn't going to go back this year because I went through really awful hip injury, and just finally recovered from that. So I was really excited to play in the season and then with COVID, we couldn't play anymore, but I was able to 
uh, playing the games, and I started and played the whole game, which was something that I have been asked to everyone to pray for me for that, and I have prayed for it a lot, and I was so grateful to have that blessing of even just a few games and getting back out there knowing that, that I could do again. Um, and I really hope to be a coach in the future too, to be able to teach other kids about this game that I love. So despite losing that season and how awful that was, um, I was just so grateful to have the time that I did to play again, and I'm hopeful we'll get a season again. Um, but I just wanted to thank the church family for supporting me throughout every step of the way as I decided what career path I want to go on and just praying for me all the time to give me strength and perseverance. Thank you. Hi everyone, if you don't know me, my name is Jordan, I'm Slim. I've been going to First Baptist Church, um, Woodstown, since pretty much I was born. I was brought up in the church, and I just wanted to take a moment to thank the church for a couple of things. Um, I, I really appreciate the support that I've had my entire life growing up, even if I was crying in the middle of mystery message or sermons. Um, I really felt like the church has been a second family to me. And another thing that I wanted to thank the church for is the opportunity to go to Baptist Camp Lebanon and um, to have those scholarships for other children in um, the church. Being able to go to Camp Lebanon was um, a blessing that I didn't know would continue throughout uh, 10 years of my life. I started going to Baptist Camp Lebanon when I was either eight or nine, back in 2010. That was the first time I went as a camper, and I still remember my first experience there. I remember my first counselor, and um, I remember how much love I felt. And I knew from a young age that this was a very special place, even if I didn't quite understand why. Um, so I guess. Nine to ten years later, I got the opportunity to work at Camp Lebanon over the summer, and I wouldn't have been able to have that experience if it wasn't for the church scholarships for Baptist Camp Lebanon. Something I learned this past, not this summer, but the last summer, is um, that kindness and compassion is a universal language. And I learned this through counseling. Um, my first ever group that I counseled was mini camp. And that was last summer. And um, trying to keep control of eight, nine, and eight year olds is very, very hard. Um, those girls just wanted to run around. And um, like I said, when I was at that age, I still understood that it was a very special place to be, even if I didn't understand all the lessons. And I really think I got that point across to the girls. And it's an experience I won't forget. It was exhausting and sometimes frustrating. I remember one morning, the girls came in um, at 4 o'clock in the morning and they asked what breakfast was. And I was like, um, it's like three or four hours away. Go back to bed. And, you know, they, those are the experiences that made it frustrating. But I'll never forget that experience because um, I learned a lot. And then my second experience um, last year is I also got to counsel a group of middle school age girls, and um, it was for a general sports camp. And if you know me or if you've ever seen me at youth group, I really don't like the sporty games, more of a board game kind of girl. And so this was way out of my comfort zone. We went on three field trips this week, and that was tubing. We went rock climbing and we went and did paintball, which are three things that I don't have a lot of experience in. Um, and what also made this experience so um, so amazing was that I, my girls, for that cabin, their first language was Korean. And, um, you know, I need to establish trust with these girls early on in order for them to trust me to take care of them throughout the week. Um, so the first thing that we established was, you know, yes and no, good and bad, because those are the basics that you need to know. They didn't like the food, or they wanted a different option, or, you know, they weren't comfortable with rock climbing, we need to be able to communicate with each other. And um, by the end of the week, 
the girls had said to me, you know, they had never been prayed over before, nobody had ever prayed over them individually, even, and even if, you know, they didn't understand the words I was saying, they still felt what I was feeling, and they felt like the Holy Spirit was really speaking to them, and um, that's when I really learned that lesson, that kindness and compassion is the universal language, um, so I'm really grateful for the church for giving me that opportunity to go be a counselor for many campers and just to have those experiences at Baptist Camp Lebanon. Thank you for all your, all your support. I can't wait for next year in college. I'm definitely going to take the lessons I learned at the church and the Baptist Camp Lebanon with me to college. So thank you again. Hi, everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Morgan Warner. I am going to be a senior at Rutgers New Brunswick this fall, so I just finished my junior year. I wanted to talk today a little bit about what God has been doing in my life, some updates from this past year. I know the second semester was a lot different than everyone expected, and I'm sure the other college students will have things to say about that too. But there has been a lot of changes this past year. Um, I think definitely during the whole quarantine experience was a time that I really had a lot of opportunity for self-reflection to kind of think about what my plans were for the future. Um, and I think that in that situation, God really helped me find what my actual path should be because I've, I've been confused. I've been going back and forth. I think that's a common experience that a lot of college students have. But I did realize one day, like, in the middle of quarantine, I was just sitting there, I was thinking, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I did feel really lost um, for the first time, really, in my academic career. I always had a plan, and this was the first time that I really just uh, felt at a loss because what I wanted to do before didn't really seem like it was going to happen. And I remember just praying, like, God, please give me some direction, give me, give me something that, you know, feels right to me, and feels like this is what I'm supposed to do. And it was really that um, soon after that I kind of was just like struck with this idea of like nursing. And so I did a lot of research on it, talked to a bunch of people, and so I decided that my plan after I graduate is to enroll in an accelerated nursing program, wherever that is. <laughs> um, and then after that, I would like to work as a nurse for a couple of years because I'll have my bachelor's in nursing at that point. And then I would love to go back and become a nurse practitioner, um, working in psychiatry and mental health care, because I've always wanted to work in mental health care or psychology, but I wasn't really sure what that looked like, and I kind of explored a bunch of different ideas, and nothing really seemed perfect for me. And this just feels like the best fit out of everything that I've ever thought that I wanted to do. And I couldn't be more happy and more excited. And I can't wait to share in that excitement with everyone else and all of you. We're all together again. So yeah, that's the really the biggest update from this past year. Um, other than <laughs> COVID happening, the fall semester was great. Um, good grades all around. But um, yeah, other than that, that's really all I have to say for today. So. Talk to you soon. Hi church, it's Emma Swala. Um, this is my video for the Sunday 2020. And one of the things that I just want to talk about is how God got me through this past year. Um, I went through a lot of changes and a lot of things that I had to learn to adapt to, a lot of things that I had never been exposed to before throughout this past year. Um, and those things just ranged from um, new health issues within my family to um, health issues and emotional um, mental issues that I started to experience myself. Um, obviously, everything with the coronavirus um, but actually, that put all of our lives on its head and we all had to learn to adapt. Um, so there were a lot of changes that I had to go through and again, I had to adapt to. Um, and I really wasn't sure why um, certain things were happening to me. And sometimes it was difficult to 
speak up under these things and why they were happening to me specifically. I went through a lot of depression um, and that affected me, again, both mentally and physically. I um, didn't want to eat for a while and I struggled with a lot of anxiety and I didn't know how to cope. Um, and then eventually, after a lot of praying, I started to see a counselor at the University of Delaware, which really, really helped um, she helped me organize my thoughts and figure out why I was experiencing these things and then we got to figure out a plan of action as to how to overcome these and how to work my way through uh, my anxiety. And once I had that, I really started to see where God was pointing me in my life um, and how he was like, this was, this was pulling me back to him. Because um, in college, and I'm going to be honest, this year I didn't go to church as often as I would have liked and I didn't um, I wasn't doing my daily as much as I would like. So this year was a wake up call. And again, God wrote me back in and helped me recenter my focus and come back to him. And I couldn't have done that without my church family. I'm always encouraging me and reaching out with notes and just checking in on how I am. And I couldn't ask anything more. Um, so I thank you guys so much. And I thank you for the opportunity to have such a wonderful church family. It's amazing to have uh, other people to turn to um, when I need help or just someone to talk to. Um, and I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your summer. FX1, I think it is. Okay. I'll, I'll oh, there we go. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Trisha Goforth. Uh, it is my pleasure this year to represent the First Baptist Church Scholarship Committee on this very, very special Scholarship Sunday. I would like to thank the members of the committee. Uh, Dee Dee Eubanks is our chair. Then Bob McCarnas um, was the representative from the Board of Deacons. Our ex officio member was Pastor Tim Joyce, and then I was representing the Board of Christian Education. The church currently offers six different scholarships, um, each having their own specific requirements um, and application process. Um, for this year, we had seven applicants for five of the scholarships. Um, it's truly been a blessing to be a part of this uh, committee, and getting to read through each of these applications was very heartwarming, um, very interesting to um, get to hear about and read about all of the applicants here at college or their senior year of high school, things that they have done throughout the last year. Uh, normally, we would share more about each of our recipients, but I have to be honest, a lot of what was in there was in those videos. Um, each of our applicants was really good about sharing um, some of what they shared with the scholarship committee in the movie or in their little videos. Um, so normally we would also ask our recipients to come up and get each scholarship as we announce them. However, we are going to ask that you hold off to the end and we will call you up at the end individually to receive your um, scholarships and your senior gifts. Um, so the first scholarship is the First Baptist Church of Woodstown College Scholarship. Each applicant should be an active participant in the First Baptist Church, submit a letter of recommendation from a pastor or Sunday school teacher, and write an essay on how Christian faith will influence you in your career. We are pleased to present a First Baptist Church scholarship in the amount of $1,000 to each of the following applicants, Ashley Adams, Eleanor Frank, Cameron Hackett Slim, Jordan Hackett Slim, Morgan Horner, Emily Sawala, and Paige Willard. The second scholarship is the Spirit Award Scholarship. This scholarship was established in 1997 by Adelaide Sibley and is awarded to a graduating high school senior who has demonstrated a willingness to grow 
in the spirit of Christ in his or her life. The recipient of this award should be a baptized believer and a member of the First Baptist Church of Woodstown. I am pleased to present the Spirit Award Scholarship of $500 to Jordan Hackett Slim. The third award is the Kitty Gessner Honorary Scholarship. This scholarship was established by the Board of Deacons in 2003 to honor the faithfulness and dedication that Kitty Gessner has demonstrated during her 34-year ministry at the, at the church's secretary. She was a vital part of the everyday ministry here at the church. The applicants were requested to write an essay on the topic of dedication and faithfulness. The first consideration for this scholarship is to be given to graduating high school seniors and then to college students. I am pleased to award the Kitty Gessner Honorary Scholarship in the amount of $500 to Eleanor Frank and Jordan Hackett Slim and in the amount of $325 to Ashley Adams, Cameron Hackett Slim, Morgan Warner, and Ali Sawala. The fourth is the William M. and Barbara S. Cannell Scholarship. This scholarship was established by the Cannell family in 2006. It is to be awarded for any higher education purpose to a worthy and promising student who is a member of the First Baptist Church of Woodstown. I am pleased to award a William M. and Barbara S. Cannell Scholarship of $250 each to Ashley Adams, Eleanor Frank, Cameron Hackett Slim, Jordan Hackett Slim, Morgan Horner, and Emily Swalla. The fifth is the Ray and Dottie Ward Faith in Action Scholarship. This is our latest and newest scholarship that was established in 2019 by Ray and Dottie Ward, who have been members of the First Baptist Church of Woodstown for 59 plus years. The wards have referred the wards, as some have referred to as church ambassadors, have demonstrated their faith in action by always serving others. Ray was instrumental in establishing both the Salem County Faith Farm and Habitat for Humanity, and served as a hospice volunteer for 25 years. Dottie helped launch the Serendipity Women's Bible Study and Fellowship Group, and has showered the congregation over the years with caring cards. Together with their love of missions and outreach, they have participated in numerous mission trips with their passion for the hospital visitation ministry have touched the lives of many. The recipient of this scholarship should be an active member of the First Baptist Church of Woodstown and one who has demonstrated their Christian faith through their actions. A letter of recommendation from a pastor or Sunday school teacher is requested along with an essay on the topic of how my faith has influenced my Christian walk and my actions. This year's recipient shares in her essay that some of her personal difficulties that she has faced over the last year and how she has had to rely on God, her friends, and her family here at First Baptist Church. We are pleased to present the Ray and Dottie Ward Faith in Action Scholarship of $1,000 to Emily Sawala. At this point, I would like to invite Pastor Tim to come up. Um, and um, we have the high school senior gifts and the scholarships. So when I call your name, please come forward and Tim will um, give you, my ball right there. Okay. He will give you your stuff. Uh, so first we have Ashley Adams. <laughs> Next up we have Eleanor Frank. Next is Cameron Hackeslin. All right, and then we have Jordan Hackeslin. I didn't see her. Is Morgan Horner here? Did anybody know she's out in the fellowship hall or the party? She's not here today. Okay, uh, she's not here today. Okay, um, we would have Mackenzie Radigan. Um, did anybody see her outside? Okay, um, Emily Sawala. Okay, and then Paige Willard. God has blessed the Congregation.
congregation and these seven young women with much gratitude and thankfulness. First Baptist Church of Woodstown awarded a total of $12,300 in scholarships today. It's a lot. <laughs> Although these young women may be approaching some unknown territories and new challenges, they have all conveyed a common thread in their words to us today, one of caring for others, service to others, and a strong commitment to their Lord. I pray their heartfelt words and their committed testimonies have touched your hearts. The Lord says in Jeremiah 29, 11-13 for the, these words, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. May the Lord protect you, guide you, and bless you. Trisha, thank you so much for that wonderful testimony, just saying that so well, wrapping up the great scholarships, the great heart of all our students, and I hope you saw, just as I saw from all our videos, our graduates, our college students, their God-focused, and other-centered. And we are so blessed for that, and I especially want to give another congratulations to our seniors. To Paige, thank you just for your heart service for all you've done. Ellie, thank you so much for your heart for others just for always wanting to lift other people up in your just teachable spirit. Jordan, your heart of prayer, just the way you continue to minister to other people through your camp ministry, through your leadership on the team as well, with our students, and just through your, teach, your desire to teach other people what God has placed on your heart. We're so proud of each and every one of you. And Kyle, I want to invite Kyle and Lauren both to come up. Kyle's going to share something, and after they share, I want to invite them down here so that we can pray over them as well. We won't be calling anybody up, but I just want to have that opportunity just as they go for it. So I want to invite Kyle Mar to come on up. And please join me in welcoming them as well. I hope it's okay I take this off. Whew, tough act to follow. Oh man. What's that? Oh. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Um, I'm loud enough anyway, so. Wow, it's so good to be here this morning, and um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, I just want to uh, extend my hand of gratitude to your search committee as well, um, everybody that was on that. Um, you guys have spent months in prayer, and uh, uh, you guys uh, have been searching for so long, and I just, I just want to thank you for the time that you spent in prayer. I was praying for you guys as you guys were praying for this seeking God's uh, will in this. And um, um, if you don't know me, my name is Kyle Parker. This is my wife, Lauren. Um, we've been married for a little over two years and we're expecting in November. So you guys will get another new um, church member in a couple months. Um, I think the best, uh, I, I'm a little biased in this. I think the best part of me coming is you guys also get my wife, Lauren. So uh, that'd be great. Um, I've been uh, doing youth ministry for probably about 10 years. Um, I'm a big kid at heart and I love uh, youth ministry. So it's awesome to see the, the heart that you guys have for your youth here. Um, I see God working here and that, that gets me fired up. I'm excited to get in here and to work with the youth and to get to know you guys to have fun, but also to grow in Christ and to um, reach out to others, to the community, to the world, because that's, uh, that's what we're called to do, to, um, to, uh, uh, to, to be disciples in, in the nations, to, um, to reach out, to love on others. Love is the greatest commandment. Um, that was uh, so awesome that, uh, that you got, uh, read Deuteronomy today. Um, Jesus, um, piggybacks on that in Matthew when he says, yeah, love the Lord God with all your heart, soul, and mind, strength, and then to love your neighbor as yourself. So I'm, I'm so grateful to be here, to be able to love my neighbors, to love on you guys, and to love on the community here in Woodstown. Um, so thank you for the opportunity, and thank you for accepting uh, me and my wife as we um, embark on our ministry here. So thank you. just to sit down on the first step and just to join me in a time of just prayer to feel free to extend your arm or just to extend your heart or whatever you feel comfortable with as well but let us pray 
Father God, we are blessed that you have chosen Kyle to come and lead our youth, and we're just so thankful for your will, Lord. As, as we as the search committee moved into this time of transition and unknown, Lord, we didn't know where you were leading. But we are amazed, we are surprised at the work that you are doing, and we are just grateful. Lord, that we, you have chosen just somebody who's going to bring a level of excitement, who's going to continue to be gospel-focused, who cares about building your kingdom, Lord. We're so thankful for Kyle and for Lauren and just for the relationship that they have. Lord, we pray that you be with them as they make that transition from being husband and wife to being mother and father. Lord, we know that this is an exciting time. We know that it will be a trying time. We know that it will be a growing time. Lord, I pray that we as this church family, even though we're just getting to know them, that we can continue to extend that hand of grace upon them. Lord, that we can show them that love and compassion, understanding, Lord, that universal language of love that you have given us. And we are just so thankful for your new start, Lord. We perceive that you are doing something new. You are making a way in the wilderness, Lord. You are making streams in the desert. Mm -hmm. And we are just blessed to be a part of it. And God, as we go forth during this time, I pray that you will empower our church. Lord, as, as I've been looking at these lists of graduates of 8th grade, of 12th grade, Lord, and just our our whole youth ministry as a whole, we have many upcoming 6th graders, we have 7th graders, 8th graders, 9th graders, 10th graders, 11th and 12th graders, Lord, and there's just people who are hungry to hear your gospel, Lord, there are families that we can continue to reach out to, to bring them into your fold, to teach them about you. Lord, as we look around in our surrounding community, there are so many people who know you, but who don't accept you. And I pray that we as a church, that we can just have that passion and that burden and that strong call that you have placed upon us, Lord, to go after the one, Lord, to be willing to reach out to those who are in need. I pray that our church can continue to be a hospital for the sick. Lord, we do not boast in our own healing power or our own nature, but we boast in you, in your healing power, in your redemptive power. And I pray that you continue to be with our youth ministry, with our children's ministry, Lord, as we continue to go forth, just that we can share the love that comes from you, and you alone. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Kyle and Lauren. We are, we are blessed. We are excited. Before we move into our, our last hymn before communion, I just think it's so exciting to continue to have Kyle and Lauren here with us. And like I shared a little bit during our search committee, we, we just weren't really sure where God was leading us. We had our first interviews on Zoom. Our second interviews in person, we each and every one of us had one of those long six-foot tables. We were all space apart from there. But we were just impressed with Kyle's desire, his level that he, of understanding that he had for the gospel, his excitement level. I remember at our second interview, the very first question we asked Kyle, probably our most important one, was, what is your favorite snack? <laughs> <laughs> and hearing Kyle's response and just level of spontaneousness, excitement just about food and snacks and everything else, I was like, that's it. He said, right <laughs> And then we follow up with that question of, can you explain the gospel to us? No pressure. And just hearing his heart for Christ, his heart for others, his heart for the gospel. I am just excited to see where he is going to go. We know that we are in a unique situation where I'm still here. I moved up into this lead pastor position, and we really wanted somebody who wasn't going to follow my own shadow, but cast his own shadow. We realized that Kyle's not even going to cast his own shadow. He's going to cast God's shadow. Because we see his heart for Christ, his heart for others, and his heart to, to just follow up where God is leading. So as we get ready to move into this time of communion, what better hymn to sing than hymn number 44? Great is thy faithfulness. And if you would join me in saying that.
Please be seated. As it is a custom on the first Sunday of every month, you do not need to be a member to take together for communion. We simply ask that you have invited Jesus Christ into your life, into your heart to proclaim him as Lord and Savior. This morning there is no litany of confession, but we are going to continue to be able to partake together. I do want to just give a few instructions. You have your communion cups. If you had not a chance to get it, there are some out there as well. But on the top half, there is a wafer on here. There's kind of two levels of plastic as well. Um, and we're going to be partaking in both at the same time, a little bit different than normal. So you're more than welcome now. If you want to feel free to, to prepare to kind of get that ready. It is a little tricky to get at this time, but we are glad to have found a safe way to partake in communion together. And this morning we are blessed. We are just blessed by you. We are blessed by our youth. We are blessed by our young adults. I realize that we've been honoring our seniors, our college students, our graduates. They're no longer our youth. They're our young adults. And it's just great to see this generation continuing to rise up to the challenge, to continue to remain, to be faithful. And we are just blessed to partake communion together with you because we are one body in Christ. And we are stronger because of your strength. We continue to acknowledge our differences. We continue to acknowledge you and realizing that we are one through Christ. And as we prepare for communion, I just want us to take a moment to pray, to prepare our hearts. Missy's going to minister to us with music. We're going to be able to have a chance to just silently confess our sins, examine our hearts, and seek his forgiveness. <laughs> alongside of you. Lord, I pray that we continue to not lean upon our own understanding, that we can trust you, because we know that your ways are higher. Lord, and our ways are not your ways, and our thoughts are not your thoughts. And I just pray that we can continue to lean upon you. Lord, as our young adults minister to us this morning, I just pray that we can heed their word, heed their knowledge, heed their faith, and continue to be pointed back towards you. Lord, as we have this commissioning Sunday of the sense, I just pray that you be with all our students as they go forth into this realm of the unknown, Lord, in this realm of newness. I just pray that you can be with them and walk alongside of them Amen. and continue to raise us up as a church, Lord, to care for one another, to nurture one another, to love one another, to outreach to one another, and above all else, to give you the glory. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. 
As we move into this time of communion, let us hear the words of Scripture. 1 Corinthians 10, verses 14 to 17. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to the sensible people. Judge for yourselves what I say, the cup of blessing that we bless. Is this not participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one bread, we who are many are one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Now we come together as that one body to celebrate our uniqueness and to celebrate our faith. And in the upper room, Jesus Christ, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup and he blessed it. He said, this is the blood of the new covenant. It's the blood poured out for you, shed for you, the blood of forgiveness. And as we now participate in the blood and the body of Christ, we know that it's through his crucifixion that we have crucified ourselves to the cross, but we know it's through his resurrection that we now live in him and through him. So let us celebrate Christ's body broken for us and blood shed for us. And let us go forth with that hope, with that promise that we have through our Savior in Christ. As we move into our, our time of benediction, I just want to remind us, as we know there's a number of people here, there's a number of gathering here, but we are asking if anybody would like to linger and talk, just to please do that outside and continue to keep that social distance amongst yourselves as well. And our benediction is simply, praise God through whom all blessings flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above, ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.